of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Uh, I don't see anybody here for open forum or public input, so we'll move uh, to approve agenda, changes to agenda. Just under the resignations, we're going to add the name of Cassidy Grizzard Elementary Special Ed. So. Mm -hmm. so. All right. I need a motion to approve, right? So moved. Second. Moved by Weber, second by Schoenfelder to approve the agenda with that, with that addition. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, right. same sign. Okay. All right, next is conflict of interest. Uh, we have Matt Leishner, the school board member, and Pat McKinnon, superintendent, substitute bus driver for both Drive for BJ Bus Incorporated, and Craig Bruning, business manager, bus route drive for BJ Bus Incorporated. Um, just a real quick uh, summation there, the information I had put in uh, your packets. Essentially, uh, the gist of it. I, I think we're okay because we're below particular thresholds as far as monetary thresholds and the other part of it is, is that we don't uh, have invested I'm not a shareholder I'm not an owner I'm not uh, somebody who is involved in that particular business nor is Mr. Leishner or Craig so I think it's uh, I don't know I call it a best practice I guess and then we just put it out there I know you guys all know as school board members that we have been doing that and we are doing that but the declaration that uh, we are doing uh, bus driver duties uh, from time to time. Mr. Bruning has a route in that respect. Um, so yeah, we do get compensated uh, for that. So everybody is uh, uh, on the up and up and understand that we are fulfilling those part-time responsibilities from time to time as well. So um, we just wanted to make sure that the declaration is noted well within our, our, our legal rights to be able to do that. So um, I suspect we probably need a motion to um, uh, declare the conflicts of interest disclosed. Mm -hmm. So so moved. I'll second. Moved by need one seconded by um, Paul to what, do, what would that motion say? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, to uh, recognize, dis yeah, recognize the disclosures yeah. okay. of the conflicts of interest. To so recognize the Disclosure. three interest disclosure conflict of interest disclosures. Any other discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Mm -hmm. All right, we will move to the next thing on the agenda is approved consent agenda. Um, a is accept financial reports. B, approve February claim minutes. Um, C, approve claims. D, approve contract. This is a contract for drama for Colleen Meddy for the 21-22 school year. <coughs> there is also a contract for BJ School Bus Incorporated for transportation services for the 22-23 school year. E is resignation. There are resignations from the following employees, Mr. Norton for 7 through 12 principal, Mrs. Jody Norton for 6 through 8 teacher, and Mr. Jim Acre for junior high boys basketball coach. This coaching contract resignation can be accepted pending a suitable replacement is found. And Cassidy Grizzard Elementary Special Education. F is void checks. The following checks issued need to be voided. Check number 62735, South Central School District for $100 to be reprinted to correct vendor Mitchell Area Superintendents Association. Check number 62567, Advanced Cognia Education for $1,200 due to us no longer using their service. Need a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I had a question on one of the claims. Okay. Um, could you, uh, either Mr. McKinnon or Craig, could you explain what the IXL learning is? We had a $9,000. Yes. Just curious. Um, the IXL learning is the software for 
uh, math and reading. Is that right, Tony? Both yeah. math and reading. And wasn't that a multi-year subscription, if I remember right? Mr. Uh, Fisher, IXL. Yeah. Multi-year subscription. It wasn't just one year, was it, or is that oh, a one-year? I, I saw something come across my desk this morning where it looked like it was another requisition for it. But well, they might have requisitioned like teachers might have for next year. But okay, the bill. So we've used them before. Let me go yes. grab the bill just yeah, to make sure. Yes. 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 yes, use it for like they can practice yeah. math. Or like they have sometimes assignments on there that they do for okay. It actually has all content areas on there mm -hmm. um, that you use. So the teachers use it as a support mechanism. Um, so if we're working on grade level standards and stuff and I want to fill the bucket maybe off uh, some uh, a first student who's maybe not on grade content so we can fill the bucket or we can fill use it for on grade content as well. So and I, I told my understanding I've had tons of experience my past job of using IXL, but I think they use it quite extensively yeah. here too. So both of my kids, my high school kids, even use it for IXL. Yeah. 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 But I don't know if this was out of three. That had to be. That's not one year. I can tell you that. No, it's not. That's what I was looking for here. Well, clarification. Oh, so it way. might be more than one year. That nine thousand. Well, it better be. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, you never know. Well. I mean, we don't have that many kids using that. Is it per student? Is a charge? Or you what? can get it a couple different ways. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, but it should be in here. Should we put it in? That's the question. She might have escaped me. How we are. What is our site license? Whether it's an entire site license where everybody has access to it, or we have a couple of licenses that are uh, I'm trying to based on it. numbers. Because you can do it. Okay. John, what page was it on? First page, yeah. Oh, that's the check reconciliation report. That was written a long time ago. Today, I guess yeah, one. that's different. Okay. Um, oh, so okay. that wasn't in the bills. Be you, you've approved that already. Correct. I was just questioning what it was. What it was. Yes. Do you want to look for it, Craig, and gotcha. we can follow up? You got yeah, a date of seven twelve was, on there, so that was last. last yeah, I, mean, July. I was going to say I'd be surprised. I if think that was a multi-year multi-year yes. deal where you got like a two or three thousand dollar discount to pay for three years at one time oh. rather than doing it yearly, yearly. Yeah. and we use it so much yeah that, yeah we each don't. teacher was doing it individually well that was kind of silly no. too Quite so then great. they all had now the high school uses it in English class I know and so the math mm -hmm. it's K through 12 it's not just elementary yeah, yeah it's, it's a site license yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. and multi-year site license <clears throat> Thank you. Good question. All right, we will move to. Did you get everything you need? So to no, that, um, we just we need, need to. We just need to vote on. Vote. Yep. I got moved by. Um, make sure I put this in there right. Moved by Schoenfelder and second by Weber. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Right now, upstate because of that BJ contract. Oh, okay. Yes. Yep. Excuse me, man. I abstain because of the BJ contract. Yeah, make sure that's noted on there. Yeah. That's my fault. Good oh. catch. Got it. Okay, so we'll move to number eight is information and staff reports. So you're gonna have Do we have anything from Mr. Yeah. Jordan? So he shared with me, he wanted right. to bring you up to speed that uh, this, this today and tomorrow we were doing an event through HOSA, um, and it has to do in, in conjunction with uh, Avera. And creating a mock uh, uh, crash scene, it's about to draw attention to distracted driving, uh, driving impaired, things of that nature. So I think today's event, um, they were every 15 minutes pulling a kid out of a classroom and um, putting a t-shirt on them and then that kid supposedly had to re remain silent for the most part for the rest of the day to give that depiction. And then tomorrow we'll be having an event um, in the morning, Mr. Kinnenberg, right? I think it's in the morning that I do a mock crash scene out here and doing some events out there. And then we have uh, two people coming in to present. Uh, Mr. Weidenbach is coming for his uh, higher power sports presentation. And then um, there was another gal um, coming to present on um, uh, mental health, making good choices, uh, positivity in, the, in, in your lifestyle. So um, we'll bring them back into the armory for that uh, particular event so third quarter ended last Thursday so potentially report cards getting those all 
squared up and coming home and starting starting our fourth quarter. I mean, here it goes. We're we're going downhill um, for that part. And, and uh, our <coughs> spring sports track started today, and I think golf is going to start in Monday. Two, Monday is it Monday? He decided Monday. That's he's open for yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but I, that's going to still be Mr. Um, Fisher's thunder and. I think that was the only couple things that. Oh, prom. How could I forget prom? Because prom. That's <laughs> April 9th. So, and I think kids are getting their stuff in line for that. So, but those are probably the three calendar things on his radar that he's dealing exclusively with. Oh, and he got his kids. He's starting a scheduling process for his kids for next year too. So he'll have all that squared away. So. Question on prom. We had. Yep previously approved fireworks. We did. I think we should keep a close eye on that. As weather wise. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Good point. I'll put that bug in Mrs. Medi's ear okay. tomorrow. So there is a burn ban on right now. So. Yeah. In Hutchinson County? Yeah. yeah. I think there is. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good to know. I mean, I don't know that stuff. I mean, sure. I appreciate that. So I'll check on that for sure. Pray for rain. I can't remember the contract that we signed on that deal as far as return on, yeah. on dollars on that, what we put up front. I don't remember, I think we didn't have to fully compensate until we went and got it. So, mm -hmm. But there might have been a deposit of some sort. Mm -hmm. But I'll, I will check on that for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, Mr. Fisher, you have any questions? The elementary principal and AD report. Yeah, um, kind of like what Mr. McKinnon was just saying, the third quarter wrapped up, so grades were being finalized by teachers today, so we'll get those sent home before the end of the week with all of our students. Um, crazy to think that we're almost done here with three quarters under our belts, but um, it's been going good. Um, we started our last of the seven mindsets this week with staff and students, and that is the time is now which is, I think, pretty fitting so that we don't go into any sort of slide or slump, um, taking action and being active. Um, we had our preschool screening last week. We had a good turnout for that. We had 42 families sign up and come in. 29 of those will be starting preschool next year. Uh, we had 13 three-year-olds come in as well. So I think it's exciting that you know, families are coming in, taking advantage of that. And uh, it went really well, uh, really smoothly. and. Got a lot of good feedback from that process, so it's exciting to, I think our numbers are in a good spot as far as that goes, and um, those are kind of the, probably the main things from that in the elementary world. We've had some really busy weeks where our kids have been able to have a lot of fun. We, if you haven't seen, we just finished up the food drive two weeks ago. Uh, we had 1,290 pounds of food collected in four days. Um, it was awesome work by everybody involved with that. Student council led the charge, so they did a great job. We collected 400 and maybe 95 boxes of cereal, and so we did a giant dominoes from the sixth grade hallway down all the way to the lobby where you come in, which is kind of a fun thing for kids to see how much cereal they've collected, and we've heard really positive uh, things from our community and the communities nearby that have been able to uh, get that food delivered to them. Today the kids had a little celebration. Um, they were, it was like uh, first, second, and third graders. They were teamed up and so they brought the most foods. They had a dance party and donuts, so that was a nice culmination for them and had a fun little 20 minute celebration in the NPR. Um, so it's been fun things like that going on and um, everything's going well, I think. So uh, ADs, AD report, uh, Mr. McKinnon touched on. Winter sports have finished up. Um, very successful basketball and wrestling seasons. Uh, we had a choir concert, choir band concert uh, last week on Thursday as well. And it was great to see and be a part of that performance. I think kids have been working hard and really enjoyed uh, those concerts. Uh, spring play is getting started today, was their first practice. Um, so things are kicking off. Track is underway now. Uh, we have club baseball that's going as well. I think we had 110 maybe today for track. Does that sound about right? Okay. Um, we had 106 signed up this morning, and I think there were a few more that uh, came out before the end of the day. So good numbers. It was fun to see all those uh, guys and gals 
get warmed up in the armory area today after school and um, golf will get started soon. So yeah, everything is underway and we're rolling. Thank you. Yeah. Um, all right, we'll do superintendent report. <coughs> if you didn't get a chance to look at some of the color sheets in there, I just want to draw your attention to a couple of bills. So the legislative session wrapped up essentially the all their work sessions was on uh, I think Friday. So, and then they have callback day or veto day on the 28th of March. So, Senate Bill 59 is the vehicle that came out for funding and they did decide um, 6% and there was no strings attached to the 6% um, disseminated out in the student for people in the new formula for ratio. So, um, there's some other provisions in Senate Bill 59 too, but essentially for the most part, it, uh, it's going to be how the money is going to funnel um, to school districts. So um, there's Senate Bill 198, and that goes back to the Juvenile Justice Reform Initiative way back in 2016. There was a bill in 98, 198 was to try to uh, eliminate uh, the greater portion of what was done back in 2016, the Juvenile Justice Reform. Um, that did not pass, but um, they did assign it to a summer study. The, the concept, the, the difficulties that school districts are having with students who, um, for the lack of better terms, there's potentially no consequences of, of any kind that school districts or even Department of Corrections or Court Services or even support of DSS to do to kids who are what we would call habitual offenders, they're minor offenses, and we they're putting those kids back into our systems, which has a tendency, and then more times often than not, cause grief. It causes, uh, it, 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 there's obstacles to overcome, they create some, some issues, they're disruptive to the environment, potentially not every kid, but there has been uh, incidents and cases across the state of South Dakota in school districts where that is the case. And the kids are, those kids who are struggling with that to fall in line, I guess, and, and come to school for the purpose of coming to school, not because they have to, because they want to learn. Um, the disruptive nature of that is something that they're going to try to address with that summer study. So um, House Bill 1337, um, that was kind of towards the back of those last pages. Uh, that was a critical race theory bill, or it was called divisive concepts I think that kids couldn't be taught that um, 1260 I think was actually the sister of that and that actually passed that was more of a college bill where they couldn't teach that um, in their curriculum on college campuses in the state of South Dakota well House Bill 1337 was addressing K-12 and K-12 that did not pass um, so I'm, I suspect that we'll see something again um, next year in relationship to critical race theory as a platform that's gaining momentum across the, um, the United States um, in, in several different states. So um, I just wanted to kind of bring up some summation as to some of those other things that we've talked about in, in, in board meetings uh, past. I will forward you a, fin a final email that I get um, from either Department of Ed or our lobbyist groups that have better summations as to the education bills as to what actually came out of it uh, in respect to uh, education. So uh, it's just good information to operate under, familiar, to familiarize yourself with those particular um, bills as they got finalized and the session came to an end. So that's all I have for you on, on my part of it. So. Do you have anything else? No, that's it. Okay. Just the one. All right. I had a question. Yes, sir. Um, on the uh, uh, school lunch um, situation, is there going to be a um, concern about our total funds in that at the end of the year? We'll have to apply for a waiver. Okay. Mm -hmm. that because we're more than the three months uh, operating expense. We'll see how it ends up. Um, but that $4.65 federal reimbursement is adding to our fund balance issue yep. and um, the one thing though that I did hear from the federal government is next year lunches will not be free anymore 
there was nothing in legislation that was going to continue that at all. So sure. next year's lunches, people will be back to paying for the <coughs> their original lunches for the ones unless they fill out a free and reduced meal application okay. and qualify for that. So we'll need people to get to <coughs> that again to make sure that they are doing that before school starts next year so that they can get those meals like they are entitled to, and but we'll, not we're everybody. We're going to have to do a... Uh, a very thorough public campaign yeah. on that to let mm -hmm. people know that one the mills are no longer free and then two because of the federal funding that's associated with our free and reduced lunch account and that comes through applications so that's all of our title money in order for us to receive the, the <coughs> dollars that we're currently receiving in our title programs we have to have people fill out those lunch applications even if even if it's more now I don't know if I qualify well that's fine. Fill it out, and we'll, we'll let you know. We'll let the certifier make that determination, not us. It has you know. to be filled out before school starts. <coughs> well, yeah, they have a grace period of the first thirty days um, carryover, but that carryover is only for ones that filled out the application last year. So a lot of people didn't fill out the application last year because they knew the lunches were free and going to sure. be free. Mm -hmm. So those ones, there is no way out. First day of school, if you don't have an application in it's paid until they get an application filled out okay but the ones that physically did fill one out last year which or this current year which was some um even though they were free, they, they would have a carryover yes. they'll okay. have a carryover okay for the 30-day window and then if they don't have a new one filled out by then then it turns into paid so if you filled one out the prior year do you get like a letter that says it's time to renew this or do they just have to we send attention? out free and reduced meal applications to every household yeah. in august yeah i just didn't know if no someone had filled okay okay no we don't so we send one out to everybody and then they just period. have to choose if they're going to fill it out or not yes. okay okay yep. sounds good so you'll be working on doing that in some way to make sure people see that absolutely through you know during the summer i mean it's not yeah. going to do any good right now to plant the seed and then yeah. really even early summer but the closer we get to the start of fall mm -hmm. you know we'll start probably pushing that hard you know right yeah, after the july, july beginning of August. Yeah, so after that holiday is over we'll start hammering that really okay. good so okay sounds good all right we will move to discussion items um the first one on the list is facility <coughs> use uh, by the public, the board will conduct a second reading and discuss proposed changes to the facility use policy and procedures for the public. So yeah, I put that in your packet. Uh, it's a conversation we started a month ago. <coughs> uh, kind of the first look at it. Uh, it took all the concerns or some of the suggestions. So, um, and you see those now that are back in, or so they have been submitted in the policy. You see a lot of that stuff in the red. Um, so. You know, we talked about availability, and I think Mr. Leiter, you brought up what about you know uh, alternative skit, uh, homeschool kids, or you know, I think some of the language in there, while it doesn't necessarily cite those particular incidents by name, but it gives latitude to allow that for those those types of things to happen. What do we do when we have older siblings bringing younger siblings in? You know, so I think that's been addressed. Um, in there i, I kind of cleaned up some access on the second page of that i had a patron call about you know felt that that was maybe a little bit nilly willy and giving people fobs and they can come in here at any point in time you know during the course of the school day and i took the information and thanked them but i think there's a way here that i have that cited as well as to make people sure or make sure that other people understand that because you have a key fob, you want to come get your kid at noon when the door's locked. Doesn't mean you can use your key fob to get in here. Mm -hmm. I mean, and if it's a practice, you're going to, I guess, take the uh, uh, opportunity to use that way, then we'll just maybe <laughs> deactivate the key fob. I mean, we'll have a conversation first, like, please don't do that. But that'll be part of the mm -hmm. um, acceptable use agreement on there. It'll be stipulated in there. So when they sign that, I mean, whether they read it or not, that's, I mean, I'm not going to force them to read it. You signed it, right? I mean, you have to understand that. I have that, a question, so. too, about that. So those key fobs can be, they're activated at all times. We can't set times that they're activated. 
Uh, or certain entrances? Or there are certain entrances, yes, that you can access. Yeah. So technically, so during example, the day, could they could get in all day using that key card? If you, if you had like an administrative one, yeah, you could get in on every, every door. But if you set specific doors for those fobs, then they're only for that door. Now, time-wise, I've never done time-wise before. I have to look more into that. But um, I also had a call from a patient about that and security issues. Maybe it was the same one. I don't know. But, yeah, well, uh, yeah, I'm sure. Um, it was. But you know, if we can, I think you can isolate those fobs per the door because mm -hmm. it says <coughs> in here the one door that we want them after hours. Mm -hmm. And part of that is is because of the documentation that we have from a camera's perspective, mm -hmm. best case scenario, using that <coughs> door and that door only to get into the facility. One highly visible to what you get into the facility then you're you're automatically under the watchful eye of three other different cameras mm -hmm. you know so if if they use the door that they're supposed to be using there's no way that we won't be able to go back if we had to if there was an incident or a situation and see who that was during that yeah. particular time I frame. think it was more along the lines of a security it, issue it is the during training. the day mm -hmm. but okay. I think that's where if you read in here Possessions of a key fob are not to be used and gain access to the facility while school is in session and during school hours. I mean, there's a statement. I mean, I don't know if we can go any further other than, again, isolating particular doors with that particular key fob. You know. So you um, can't have it certain hours of the day where it's accessible. Well, I think we can look at that. I think there may be a potential possibility that those fobs that are out there, that if we follow through with this facility use policy, that those fobs are only active between right. the hours that we are suggesting and not during the hours of operation. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to could, look into that. That could we pose just, a security problem with students yeah. in the school and, and We just the never done that way. I mean, I, I mm -hmm. can't say there is or there isn't. We just never done that way. Because every other door is technically locked. locked. It is. You know, so then we're giving access to those with the key fobs and that, you know. You and you know. can set times on doors, but we just don't mm -hmm. know if you can set times on the key fobs yet. Mm -hmm. So we have to look into. Okay. So certain people can have different access than others, right? Like you could, you can have access to every door, whereas someone who comes and pays for this maybe only has access to one door, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then it's the next. It's the nth degree in making sure that that key fob is only, it's functioning only at the hours yeah. of 6 to 9 right. or 4 mm -hmm. to 9 yeah. or Saturdays and Sundays. Or yeah. Right. So we'll definitely right. look that's into that. Know. Yeah, I think, you know, I mean, that's a valid. Yeah, that makes sense. If you're going to keep issue. the doors locked during school day, yeah. yeah. It's a good question. Okay. Well, I hope that we're, we're people that are getting these fobs are. Well, that's kind of what I'd to don't know. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I get upset. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a chance. And that's, yeah, I that's get it. I understand it. I don't disagree with the notion at all. I think that's something that we will certainly will have to go and vet to make sure that the, the, the opportunities and, and the accessibility is something that we can do there. You know, so um, I, I think mean, limiting it to as much yeah, the least contact with school day is probably great. The best, yeah, yeah. Okay. All well, right. If we so do we'll that. Plus, it's in it's in verbiage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have to be aware. Well, I didn't read it. Well, it's not my fault. I guess that you didn't read it. So, what? I mean, what else on here? As far as, I, I mean, I think I got all the the concerns that we talked about last mm -hmm. time. It's in there. I think they got addressed. Um, is it perfect? I don't know. I mean, this is something, guys, that in my opinion, it'll be a working document because there's going to be something that's going to arise out of this, mm -hmm. and you can always come back and close the loopholes that one has a tendency to exploit. Okay. You know, when comments on both sides of the coin, you know, that sure. we shouldn't be doing it, but also some positive feedback on it. So, right. you know. <laughs> so who's going to be running it? As far as the fobs. Yeah, that's all in our security system. I mean, so I think with Tony and I um, sitting down and we get those requests in and then we'll have, basically, I mean, I have to add a, add a spreadsheet, um, had names, numbers, plus I'll have their acceptable use agreement form. We'll sign them particular numbers on the FOP so we know who's who and what's what. 
you know, because we can access that information within the software too. So I can tell you the FOB's got a key number, it's got a number on it, that name's associated, that number will come up when it's swiped the door. So, I mean, it's, you can get right down there mm -hmm. as far as so understanding who is so using if, it. So if there are issues, um, who's going to handle the issue of disciplinary yeah. activity? Ad, yeah, it'd be admin. Okay. Yeah. So you or, yep. or is it going to be uh, I think any, any any of us, you know, in those principal's chairs or the superintendent's chairs is, is I think, ultimately part of our responsibility. So depend on the age? Yeah. If it's high school or, or yep, right, then elementary. essentially. Okay, I'm just asking. Yep, I mean. no, they're good questions. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I think the first line of defense is, is if there's an issue, perceived issue, something happened, so like anything else, you report to the admin, mm -hmm. and then we investigate and mm -hmm. you know, look into it and what were the circumstances that were potentially surrounding it. And then as far as making the call, uh, I don't think I threw anybody under the bus here. Can't remember if I maybe that's more. Of a, uh, I'm working on the actual form and what it looks like. I don't have that yet. I thought I put in here about board and admin having final decision or yeah, oh at the very top school board in support of and along with the school board in support of and along with administration may revoke user privileges at any time for violations of the expectations embedded in the acceptable user agreement so so, so the person that uh, pays the five the hundred fifty dollars are you going to have them mention in particular um, their kids or the people that are going to be yeah it'll the, the, on that acceptable use form mm -hmm. i mean so we're going to they'll have to fill that information out put kids names on there so okay. you know in their family you know who's utilizing that it's the ones that we talked about and here's a little bit of the concern that we had <coughs> is will we get taken advantage of if we want to if me and my four buddies want to come up and play basketball and my parents are the only ones that sign the acceptable use agreement. Right. And right now, we have that. I can bring four buddies with me. But ultimately, if something goes <coughs> awry or something goes amiss out of that, then it's my parents because they said yes to that event. And even <coughs> if they didn't say yes to that event, they didn't know the kid was there, ultimately it's coming back to that to parent. That. You know, so we didn't want to be exclusive and exclude those particular people that, whether it's a choice or maybe don't have the opportunity to do that. And I think that's the other question, Mr. Prohl, is do you want to assign that $150 per year fee? Is that too high? Is that too little? We don't need it at all. I mean, I, you guys, whatever feedback you have on that, and that was, where did I get that number? I, there's no rhyme or reason to it other than just assigning the number to it. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any issue with the dollar figure. It could sure. be 50 to 250 out of it. I right. don't care. But I'm just more concerned about accountability. Sure. It is where I am. And now we still have it where 9 through 12 students can come by themselves, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or was it 7 through 12? 9, it's nine. 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 Yeah. 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 So, I mean, as far as a elementary principal having to deal with a lot of issues he's going to be dealing with the parents because the parents should be in here anyway mm -hmm. so it's probably going to fall more but nine on. through 12 can bring little brother yeah it's yeah just, yep. mm -hmm. so, but the ninth i mean i don't know if that's the, i would say maybe it might end up falling more on the high school end than it would yeah. end up on the elementary end possibly but <coughs> okay. no, i'm just asking the questions <laughs> oh, those are great questions i mean it, it's you know understandable as to how that whole process is going to go um but Ultimately, the the responsibility I think again falls to admin. M Mr. Fisher's part more on the AD aspect of things, and then high school principal. And I know that'll be a little bit of a a gap here this summer because that person won't have that you know understanding and working knowledge. So it ultimately that'll fall on me. And that goes back to this: if you're in your second reading, if we like it and there's really no other changes made to it in this stage of the game and then you end up adopting it in April, then, you know, we can that stay at that time, put, dictate a start date and when this is actually going to start happening. You know, if we want to finish the school year and put a June 1 time frame on that, I mean, we can 
have that final conversation at the April meeting. Mm -hmm. so can, can they bring anything? Can they bring in tennis rackets? As far as the equipment, um, I mean, can they bring in anything that? Yeah, no. It has to be stuff in here. Right, I'm and, and part of that is is it's not bringing in outside resources, but honest to God, it's the the flip side of that. It's not using school district resources mm -hmm. too. Like if, if we go into the PE closet, so to speak, um, that's where we probably ran into the biggest problem, and that's where that PE teacher drew a line in the sand and said, hey, and then we ended up locking the door. I mean, we got a whole different, and there was only, honest to God, one key to that door, period. And that way those kids, they never got access to the PE equipment for those okay. kids to potentially utilize or play with. You know, so I would say 95% of the utilization, it really had to do with, you know, doing that individual workout, shooting, lifting weights. Uh, mm -hmm. So like you if know, somebody wanted to come to it's, it's not a play tennis court. court. It's yeah, not playing a, a five on five or three court. on three or something. Somebody wanted like to sure. use the volleyball yeah. net and they know how to set it up. Yep, absolutely. Are they, be they did that okay. all the time. Okay. Yeah. Yep. But there again. And balls you, like will be open yeah. access to. Okay. Right. If you put it up. Yeah, oh yes, Take of course. It and you want to know how to do it. You don't yeah. just go try to do it. You right. should know how to do it, but yeah. And any 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 girl that's playing volleyball, trust me, knows how to play. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. One thing I don't know if you've ever been asked, I just, we might get asked this question is, you know, currently staff members can't. Do they have to pay the 150? I wouldn't, that my first notion. Would that be, cool. would that change? I'm just, that might be a question that might come up and it's not really addressed in there. I don't think so because they need the FOP to get into the school. So Yeah, because they'll already have their That's a perk of working I, at the I'm school. I'm just saying that yeah. that no, might I come think up that's and a it good wasn't point. addressed. Yeah, so I don't know. On staff. Maybe. What you think? Yeah, staff so should, uh, it shouldn't be a charge at all. check on the security since you've had a few questions. Yeah, so we'll read it again next meeting, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. Of staff. What else did you say, Lindsay? Check on the security. Can like you limit keep that the door time lock frame? during those yeah. hours, and then let the key fob work. You know, in the evening hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not accessible during school. Yeah. Okay. All right. Kay. Anything else for that topic? I, I don't. Care. Okay. All right. We'll move to B, which is update on HVAC and lighting projects. The board will hear an update on the timeline and contract information for the upcoming project starting at the end of this school year. I was hoping to have timeline to share with you, but that did not uh, evolve. Um, but I did get contracts uh, from Folsom Sheet Metal and just got those taken care of and signed today. I had, um, I sent them to our school attorney. He said, look pretty standard to me. I don't have any issues as long as you're good with the timeline on it, which obviously we are. So um, I have signed those documents and sent them back to Pulse and Sheet Metal as well as Ace Engineering. I've yet to see contracts on the lighting project um, part of it. Excuse me, so um, we're waiting on that. And I don't have, Damon told me that when we get the contracts back, he gets it back, then we'll establish a pre-construction meeting and then that's where we'll get more um, information and feedback on what's the timeline and what potentially parts of the project could be happening here when school gets out. So, but so that's not a whole lot of information there, but that's where we're at on that okay. concept, so. All right, that's it? Yep. All right, we'll move to action items. <coughs> oh no, I got missed one. Yeah, uh, C is our plan, American Rescue Plan, ESSER 3 update. The board will discuss proposed changes to the initial art plan proposed at the start of the school. Started school. Um, so you should have this, you had this document in there that had some yellow on it, okay, and that was one of the pages that kind of outlined the, uh, some of the learning loss strategies that were way back in August that we had cited about taking a look at <coughs> and, and uh, addressing that. Um, you know, I put in my notes mm -hmm. there, if you had a chance to read them, we're kind of a little bit of a crossroads here. Um, you know, I had an in-service on the 21st, and again, I laid it out to our K-12 staff as far as this learning loss approach, especially in our summer school environment, and doing the summer reading academy and the summer math academy, and looking at 
um, a STEM summer camp for our, our middle school kids and a credit recovery approach um, and utilizing those dollars to create those learning experiences, create a structure for those learning experiences, what's going to be our time frame, who, who are we going to target, and how many kids are going to be involved in that, and then from a staffing perspective, who's going to run that? I mean, who's going to be in charge of that? Well, you know, when we when we t stop and took a look at it, and this is conversations, and Mr. Fisher and I, and Mr. Fisher can be able to chime in here, um, we're wondering, now that we are where we are in the school year, is to, it, is this the best utilization of our ARP dollars in order to create these summer learning experiences? And the notion, when ARP first got put out, at the time, keep in mind, the millions of kids that had been, still hadn't been back to school. You know, where we were in school all of that year, the greater portion of the United States was shut down, especially in the metro areas and where we did. So are we truly experiencing some or learning loss for our students? Well, we have some data points that we use throughout the course of the school year from beginning until now that that data would suggest to us that the learning loss maybe isn't as great as we had potentially anticipated, and in some cases not even at all. You know, so is using our ARP dollars to create these summer learning experiences when there's several obstacles that are in our way not that they can't be vetted and they can't be fixed but overall utilization of dollars so we thought of some other scenarios and in, in looking at some of the things that have um i think transpired because of i don't have any data to say that's because of covid but we're experiencing in our early childhood programs um the depth of academic uh, lack of accountability, academic understanding, capacity, and then you couple that honestly with behavioral issues that we're seeing that are starting to elevate in our early childhood classrooms. When I say early childhood, I'm talking pre-K through two. That's how it's defined. So, would we better would we best better served if we took those dollars out of these academies and did something along the lines of trying to address the, the needs academically and or behaviorally um, in those particular early childhood programs. Well, one way to do that is one, reduce the numbers in those particular classrooms. So the teachers that are in charge of those classrooms aren't teaching a one to 22 ratio, one to 23 ratio, um, and then you know create some smaller groups in that. And then it also helps to dig down at the kids level, not only academically, but behaviorally. Uh, potentially, if we looked at creating another section of kindergarten, um, we can disperse those numbers, and Mr. Fisher's better adept at the numbers than I am, but um, we can disperse the potential, not perceived even, our potential behavioral issues that we're seeing right now, instead of dumping them all in section that we can disperse those out and they're a little bit more easier they're, they're easier to manage you know for the teacher as well as the support staff that are going into those facilities mm -hmm. so or excuse me into those classrooms I have a question so you talk about standards have the standards been lowered since COVID they're the same as they were before yeah COVID. exactly okay yeah. I just thought maybe I could question. see them lowering the no. standard and then us saying well we're above it well maybe that's what it used to be so i just wanted to make sure the standard had a change no and that's more of a doe uh, aspect of things where our standards are you know vetted at uh, the department of education by the the um, south dakota school or uh, uh, board of education so that is a notion that there's no way we're going backwards on this they don't even with covid and as damaging as it has been in some respects that we're going to go backwards in the state of south okay dakota. i just wanted to make sure it's a that great it's question changed right so we're de definitely not lowering the bar that's good yeah because that's you what i want, thought initially i was like right. oh no yeah and you don't want to but in the same token we're we're dealing with kids that are coming through the door that i'm telling you never seen a book i've never been read a book don't know A through Z, never seen the letter, don't know how to spell their name, don't know colors, can't count to 10. Um, and then you couple that uh, with some of the, the, the practices that, instructional practices that teachers are trying to engage these kids in. And then 
the, the oppositional defiant, the ODD, the, the ADHD, the inability to stay attentive and engaged in something for the greater part of two minutes. You know, the kids, they just, and it's not all of them, don't get me wrong, but it's enough of them to create a disruption and a distraction to the rest of the classroom. So if we can thin some of that out and, and give those teachers a little bit, I don't have to try to address one of 23. I got 14 sitting in front of me. And then that's a little bit more manageable. <coughs> so better use of our dollars, taking those dollars, reappropriating them from our art plan. I'll have to go in and put an addendum in there if we agreed to it. Um, or if you are agreed <coughs> to it, to, and I talked to the Department of Ed about us doing this. There's nothing prohibitive that says you can. You just have to change our allowable use for it and add an addendum to it. And our DOE rep said, I think that's a great idea. If you're not seeing a learning loss that you thought you would have saw or you anticipated, by all means, change it. Use it more appropriately as how it fits your school district. So, so how are you saying that we, we're seeing, like what have you looked at that you're saying we haven't seen a loss? What are we looking at? Yeah. Um, we've looked at like our, we use star mm -hmm. reading and star math and looking at those scores. And they've been pretty consistent with, you know, before and after and where our kids are at. And honestly, our kids are at a pretty good spot with reading um, and even math when we look at those. Okay. Those aren't the state tests, those are just our own, you know, that sure. we, purchase and use but our kids are in a good spot with those and that's in elementary that's elementary yeah. is there anything in high school as far as standard like measuring their standards no and then when you look at what we were doing there the summer the stem summer camp was an extended um, not necessarily fill in the bucket but more of an enrichment aspect of mm -hmm. uh, uh, opportunity <coughs> and then credit recovery that is more about kids who are failing courses during any one semester. No, but I mean, does the high school have anything that's similar to what elementary does? Like star reading, they, star math. Yeah, they have their own classroom <coughs> assessments. Now, do they have um, uh, a, a standalone assessment tool such as star reading or star math or NWA maps? Um, we don't use anything at that level to hone in other than the only one metric we do have is one, the SBA scores for eighth graders going into high school. And then as juniors, a majority of our kids take the ACT. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and we do have, we always have access to our students as VEB scores, which are all aligned to content. And then for the last, excuse me, <coughs> couple of years, more than a couple, Parkston gives the NCRC, National Certificate of Readiness, Mm -hmm. which is aligned to uh, content, uh, our four content areas as well, but they always give it to the seniors. So that's a metric. I mean, these kids are packing up and, mm -hmm. you know, moving out. It still gives those kids an opportunity to take an NCRC certificate with them, <coughs> which is more of an employability tool, or excuse me, for those kids. <coughs> but as far as us using it as a metric to design and change instruction mm -hmm. it doesn't help because <laughs> those kids are on the way out the door okay. but it certainly gives us a look to cha a chance to look at those areas and consistently you know whether it's math reading um, there's applied math component to it too that we can't make some changes to you know the system mm -hmm. as a whole but that's that's a whole notion Miss Nebel that it's going to take some time. Yeah. To I was just curious if you, you know, like how you're working right. at it. We I don't guess. have that. And we're still using, we use those star reading, star math scores, and we use, and we've looked at our, our state tests, the SBAs that Mr. McKenzie referred to, to create for our fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. We have some intervention time where we're, we're pulling those kids that have lower test scores to try to get them to grade level. Mm -hmm. um, teachers are doing things in their classrooms and we're pulling them. So we're working together in that area. And then we have title services for our um, kindergar kindergarten, first, second, third graders. Mm -hmm. And so we're also catching them up in those ways. Mm -hmm. And so it's not that we're just not doing anything. I mean, there are kids that oh, sure, you yeah. know, we need to, that we've identified needing a little extra support. Which is every uh, year, not yep. just, yeah, yeah. We're just okay. not seeing like, these huge sure. groups. Okay, which is good. So. Yeah, I was just curious how you 
if there's another tool that we can assess, and Moby Max is another yeah. resource software that we use down there, but <coughs> the IXL bill that Mr. Prohl just asked about, yeah. IXL is another resource that we use up at that end, probably more than down at this end, to be able to hone in on a specific uh, uh, set of standards that kids are potentially struggling with as a either grade level or uh, section level type mm -hmm. of approach. So, so are you proposing that we do like three kindergarten? So, Mr. Fisher, Wait, is this jumping you, the gun a little bit, or yeah, no, that, that's perfect. That's yeah, good okay. perfect segue. transition. I mean, I think that's ideally what we'd like to do mm -hmm. is propose three kindergarten classrooms in addition to beginning garden. In addition to beginning garden. Okay. Yep. Um, Cite so we, your numbers, please, for yep. those three. Those that, those all total numbers for those yep. kids that are five years old. Okay. So currently in beginning garden, we have 22 students. They will all come to kindergarten. Uh, we have 39 in preschool. And so what we'd like to do is, we have 16 for sure that are going. We'd like to, there's probably an additional five that we could probably get to go to kindergarten if we spread out. This would involve, we've ta I've talked with the teachers, slowing the pacing of the kindergarten down, um, having the three sections so that now we have more peers of like age. You know, some right now currently, if, if you're on the younger scale, for example, maybe a, a March birthday, you would be really, really young in our current kindergarten model. This would hopefully spread those ages out and give everybody that would be in that group then of probably 45-ish kindergartners then spread out into three sections, mm -hmm. whereas you're gonna have 14, 15 kids per uh, section there. You're still gonna have probably 18 or 19 beginner garden, which is in my opinion a little too high, but it just with siblings and birthdays and everything is probably the best that we can get it for year one. Year two, it might lower that beginner garden number a little more, potentially. Um, we'll see what numbers would allow. This would be a two year proposal using uh, the art funds. Um, with that being said, as Mr. McKinnon said, I mean, we have kids coming to us with more trauma than probably Parkson has ever seen before. Kids that, when you talk to a beginner garden teacher, amazing kids, they're amazing students, amazing people, but they're coming to us, you know, not always having a parent that has been super supportive or whatever it might be for whatever reason, trauma from COVID. That's where we're seeing the trauma has hit us the hardest. Preschool, beginner garden, and so we wanna spread those kids out, slow the pacing down, make sure we can use our first semester to get all of our kindergartners and beginner gardeners at the same level, and then if we can go faster, we'll go faster. But I mean, that allows us to do that. It allows us to spread out behaviors so that we can now have three groups to spread out kids that we know need a little more love and support. Um, that's, that's kind of our, our hope and our thought behind it. Also, it helps us in beginner garden, kind of right now, huge gap between our top and our bottom. And so when we start to differentiate, if we're able to move a few more to kindergarten, we shrink that gap and make it more manageable for our beginner garden teacher to best support all of the students um, in that beginner garden classroom. Um, so those are kind of why, and then our hope is, okay, because then the next question would probably be, well, our first grade sections are gonna be a little bigger. Yeah, our first grade sections could be 22, 23, but our hope is that by spreading these kids out in kindergarten, putting all of our resources into this early childhood, now we can get those kids supported where academically they're in a good spot. Now they're not as frustrated. <coughs> We've been able to work through some of those behaviors we're seeing, and they're ready to go into now a, a section the size of 22, 23 in first grade. Um, so that would be our rationale behind it. Do you think that the recommendation on going to kindergarten versus the kindergarten will change a little bit? With this I think it could, yeah. Model, okay. I think it Remember, could. the beginner garden is kindergarten in the right. state size because they're I'm all asking. five years old. Yeah. Okay. Right. Same curriculum, just. Yeah. Pacing's a little, you right. know, it's yeah. slower. It's yep. not as rigorous in beginner Correct. garden. We're not getting through all of the standards. We're getting through a big chunk of them, but right. not as much as they are in kindergarten. Craig, say that again. What did you say? In the state size, beginner garden is kindergarten. We get when we report them to the yeah. state, like. When we show, when you look at the state's website as far as their enrollment numbers, K for kindergarten is listed at like 60 some kids mm -hmm. right now this year. Mm -hmm. Less the beginning garden and kindergarten okay. combined. Mm -hmm. okay. They don't, it's not a separate grade. They're five years old, so we get funding on them. Sure. Okay. So really, we just put the title beginning garden on it. And okay. the state's eyes, funding wise, it's a kindergarten class. Mm -hmm. okay. I didn't know that. 
how, how many dollars are we talking about here? So when we looked at um, capturing our summer academies and reallocating it to the art plan, uh, were we 82,000 yep. grade? I think I remember right. So it's redirected in the totality, and again, remember that was through the course of, um, at what the time we wrote this was the course of three years, you know, so now we're through this particular year. This is the first opportunity we've had to do the summer academies, if we were going to do that. So it's not just one year, it's a capturing of all that for the duration of the grant, you know. So, yeah, we're looking at, uh, you know, um, somewhere between that eighty and $85,000. So, so you're talking about adding two staff? It'd be one, and you, that's potentially for two years. That's not enough, but there's some other there things. Some other that money, there's some other fandang around there. We think we have enough of our money. Yeah, we can capture the money, um, you know, within our our plan again, and that's just kind of moving some of the chairs in the Titanic. It's not doing something entirely different, you mm -hmm. know. So we we feel Craig and I've we beat this up pretty good uh, before we brought it to you guys and saying okay can we do this and we feel confident enough that we can find the resources within the art plan to make sure that we can support this um, so it's no general fund dollars involved in this for at least two years now the state's going to say what are you going to do after that mm -hmm. well, that's you know that's my yeah, question so it depends on the numbers it's a great yeah. question you know so what can we do with that well you know is is we'll have to just i don't know one of the things here I've never figured out in education is to do a census. <coughs> I, don't, I don't know the appropriate way to handle that situation. I never figured it out up there. I don't know that anybody's done it here. The people I've talked to said we don't know how to do it here either. How do you capture what's happening in those households for kids that are essentially four and under? I mean, how many kids are actually floating out there? People will step forward and say, other than we do our child finds and we do our preschool screenings and things like that, but you're still missing a plethora of people that are out there. So to try to find a real number to support it moving forward um, in year three, year four, um, worst case scenario, push come to shove. Uh, if it has to go away from a budgetary perspective, then you know it goes away. Is that best case scenario? Probably not. And the state, they're, they're not gonna draw a line in the sand. I mean, I've been involved in grants before where they ask the same question, how are you gonna sustain it? when push comes to shove at the end of it, when the money runs out, if your plan doesn't come to fruition, then it does, it disappears. And there, there's no police coming in here and saying, okay, you know, give us our money back then, because they understand the, the reality of the situation. Again, you don't want to do that. And I don't think we're doing it nilly willy. We're kind of doing this model, part of it too, Mr. Fisher and I talked, maybe in the Field of Dreams model, build it and they will kind of come concept mm -hmm. and I know that's wishing right but um, if, if if it's something that people uh, find a liking to that maybe it becomes that attraction where all of a sudden the numbers are starting to tick upward how many students would we have to capture in order to make that sustainable well even a first-year teacher is going to cost us about 60 grand so well, 12 yeah so essentially yeah right i mean we're our our what we get so out of the student teacher ratio we're probably getting what 6500 a kid 70 70 um right around there that's yeah. why i think about 12 kids is what i guess yeah so i mean if you can get 12 kids okay there's your teacher and then you can stay with that program so so you're yeah. proposing to oh sorry Jed, did you have a question okay um to get rid of all these things you've highlighted so that and then have a third teacher he said, yep, yep. So we'll, we'll still we'll do a summer reading program, just not to the scale of. Yeah. Right. Or what we did our old, it would be yeah. more like our old summer reading program that we had before. Okay. Currently, not yeah. just, not the new additional ones that we were trying to, or what we had envisioned. We were hoping to build a program here that had greater extent. We were targeting more kids. We were involving more staff. We were going to increase the length of time in these particular opportunities to engage these kids for the purpose of trying to fill buckets. Well, mm -hmm. are we already, I mean, I, I don't, you don't want me to repeat that again because you heard it once already. So, but yes, we are asking, what we're rewriting the addendum is, uh, you know, essentially taking these particular components out of the plan and then including in the plan, using the dollars to 
hire another staff member for two years. So all of this is the summer stuff, right? It yep. is. Yeah. That I've highlighted. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So if you don't use some money, you lose it, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then you have to do it. But this is the 20% that we're required to spend on. This we've is, already get, but we were at 400 and some thousand, where we only needed to be at 290. We need to spend 290. Yeah. You know, when you said we were, we were a even little short, this stuff, not much though. Even if we didn't do this, what we were proposing, we still have our learning loss. Yeah, we still have our learning loss without it's covered. Just real quick, what are we going to use to measure this? Are we still going to use a star reading? I know two years isn't very long. To you know, because I mean, I'm a firm believer, and if you don't, if you don't measure it, you don't care about it. We have to be able to measure, you know. Is it making a difference? Is, is what you mean? Just, yes. Yeah. I'm just yeah. curious. What are we? Will Star be able to tell us? Are are we? Seeing oh, that? I think so. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and I think perfect. there's also going to be yep. some qualitative data that we'll oh, see yes. with yeah. our behaviors. I mean, that yes. that'd be a big thing that I wanted. You know, how do we help those kids that have experienced so much trauma? You know, and I think that'll be something that there's going to not be a test for, but we'll know if it's working or not just based on it, how they're interacting. And that spies. comes, Mr. Schoenfelder, from being more intentional and purposeful with the data points that we do have and reporting that back to not only for our sake, for parents' sake. So if you had, I mean, I can go back right now and pick a fifth grader and I can trace him all the way back. That data is there. Whether it's been used or whether it's been shared or not, I, you know, I'm new here. I'll just throw that out there. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I think that opportunity is there. Okay. Is it our intent to, I think, become more immersed in that and, uh, for lack of better terms, be more intentional about those data points and reporting them back to not only for our sake, but for sake? Absolutely. Uh, so it, it does become yeah. quantitative. Yeah, Who you know. does the STAR report? Is it first grade through sixth grade? or? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But kindergarten doesn't do that. Uh, I, I can't say I for don't sure. I, I don't, kindergarten? I'm not sure if they did or not. STAR. I mean, I, I think they do their yeah. standards. But I don't know that it was a STAR test. I, I, just, I was just curious, just for... Me personally, I mean, I think this sounds like a great idea. I mean, anytime you're building a house or structure of any sort, I mean, you're also mm -hmm. going to stop at the start at the bottom. I mean, if that's, if that's where there seems to be some, some issues, I... I think it's an awesome idea. Great. One thing, what it is it going to help? You know, it seems like with the beginner garden program, you get into those other grades first, second, third, and there's there can be a gap with the age. This should help with that as well. This should hope. definitely help with that. That would be the big, another big. Yeah. There seems to be a pretty big gap sometimes between those that took beginner garden and then mm -hmm. don't. So yep. it should be helpful. This as should well. balance that out. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's when I say like I think five families would yes. go to kindergarten with this model because of that balance then. Mm -hmm. yes. I think their concern is the one-on-one -on -one attention. Yeah. 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 Yes. If, they can, if they can get uh, a smaller student-teacher <clears throat> ratio yeah. in there, they'd be more apt to you know, buy into that proposal sure. rather mm -hmm. than, you know, um, if, if, it's gonna, if I'm going to be a one of 22, one of 23, mm -hmm. I'm going to stay back here and do mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. And part of that is, is the learning experience back here because we're inundating that particular classroom is like, right. that, that's, not, <clears throat> that's not working very well either. Mm -hmm. Are we utilizing the extra time we have from this counselor to help with that yep. support? Yep, okay. and we have plans to go with some school-wide stuff that we've been working on individually with a couple classes right now. But yeah, yep, that'll be a big part of it too. Yeah, because yep. I mean, she has if 30 you're minutes a, a week with those kids, feeling that you know yep. the behavioral, the trauma portion, it's like she could be really helpful. Yep, yep. and those things as well. So. Yep, yep, that's our goal. Is that by the time kids leave here, it's fifth grade now I guess next year they'll be able to verbalize exactly what zone they're in there's colors for each zone of I am frustrated I am sad I am happy I am angry why are you there how what kinds of things can I do to improve how I'm feeling but those are right there Jill is exactly our biggest struggle mm -hmm. kids will come in and be like well how are you feeling I don't know mm -hmm. you know and they don't know if they're sad they're upset they they can't tell you so then how do you you can't really yeah. help them yeah you know and that, that's not uncommon right now mm -hmm. some of our toughest kids are like that you know and so all of those things come into that that trauma of and how we can teach them and help them you know Cons manage how they're yeah. feeling. consistently building coping strategies yes. and mechanisms within our students you know and that again that takes time mm -hmm. to, to do that so, so the so. teachers are using those same tactics in It'll the be school wide next year right now we just kind of started implementing with a few classrooms mm -hmm. next by next year everybody will be on board all speaking that same language 
That's cool. Yeah. As a parent, I was going to say as a parent, I would like to see that because I think if you're using it at school, it'd be a good tool at home too. No, for real, I'm serious. I would too. like to I'm know totally that. Yeah. I mean, that's I think how we that's, make those big changes. That's when awesome. It's everybody using yeah that language. So that's that really yeah good. that is in our our plan. Cool. Okay. Sweet. Yeah, I think this is a good idea. I mean, yeah, you know, like Jen said, I think starting at the bottom is most important. If that's where you're seeing the biggest difficulties, then that makes the most sense, I guess. Do everybody mm -hmm. agree? Mm -hmm. Across 20, 24 when we get there. Yeah. yeah. I, I know that's not a best practice, Matt. I, I don't. Well, that doesn't give me warm fuzzies about telling you that. Mm -hmm. That we'll just cross that bridge when we come to it. It gives mm -hmm. the impression that we're kicking the can down the road. But yeah. you know, I well, our numbers might dictate. Our, our yeah. Yeah. numbers yeah. might go down, and then if nothing else, right. we have an extra teacher. We know we have. Utilize. We right. know have, we have yeah. numbers right now that mm -hmm. justify. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the two years, for sure, yeah. because of the size of the preschool. Well, we want to make sure they have what they need now. If that changes in the future, then we make changes. We just so. The only other question I have, I guess, is is this going to be an avatar's position, position because it's hard to find teachers? Yeah. Well, just like we've always done, so we'll put it out in-house. Okay. But I think there's some interest in in-house as far as, you know, whether Shuffle and Share is a Titanic or we have some people that are doing some student teaching capacities and see what that brings us. Mm -hmm. You know, but as far as I think we'll do due diligence yet and push that out there like we pushed everything else out there right now. So it was going to be advertised as a two year position. Yeah, you said like that. the classified yes. position. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. <coughs> okay. All right. Anything else on that? We need a motion to approve, right? Is that what you're looking for today? To approve the changes, right? Yeah, I suspect we need something there on the ARP plan in order to, you know, have it documented that you as a school board made the decision to make the changes, the proposed changes to the ARP plan. So, yeah. Okay. So moved. I'll second it. Moved by Leishner and second by Nebo to approve the changes. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. All right, we will move to um, action items, right? Yeah. Number 10, yep. um, A, it says consider request for proposal. Sure. Is it is it uh, out of the norm to, can you can we address B and C first for the sake of time? Because I think your A is going oh, yeah. to become a little bit. Sure. We'll do B as approved school 22-23 calendar, which was on the back here. I just sure. begin your color calendar. Go ahead, Mr. I, just, I had a couple of our, our parents and constituents reach out to me. It just it, more more out of curiosity and uh, as to why we don't exactly. And I mean, obviously, look, that's how I can answer that. But why we don't have a scheduled spring break? And and they're not really complaining, but there's just their point they wanted me to bring to you guys was okay for families that maybe have you know cousins in Iowa or New Orleans mm -hmm. or, or somewhere you know it makes it very difficult for them to to have a break with kids and I mean I'll, I'll testify to the fact if if I have five days with my kids well you're gonna lose two you're gonna lose one on the way in and one on the way out you know so um, and uh, you know I mean as I look at the schedule I don't know I just was I just would challenge maybe the calendar committee to kind of look at this and see if we can and once again I don't know all the answers here but maybe we could go like with some of these state wrestling or state boys basketball you know in, in the event we would qualify to like an online learning platform to maybe at least work our way to looking at some sort of spring break like a full week yeah. you mean well I'm not or saying maybe, maybe not full week but maybe, maybe like, at least three days like a Wednesday that Easter is four days. Mm -hmm. It is four days. Yeah. It's a Friday and a Friday Monday. Monday. Friday and a Monday. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay. And you I have, don't know. It just seems your hard. Thanksgiving jid is Wednesday, Thursday, yep. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yep. There's your five days. Yeah. Time. And but it just being the long guy here, been here a while. We used to have a spring break a couple of days. But what happened was I think <coughs> we moved one of them to the Thanksgiving because we never used to have that Wednesday off, if I remember right. And it was never like a whole week. Um, but there was like maybe the extra day was on the Easter weekend always. I can't remember, John. Do you remember? But, but you're spot on. We used to. There used to be something. It wasn't. It was just a long weekend. It wasn't a whole week because here's the other thing: trying to get a whole week off. 
there's so many activities going on. Mm -hmm. Those kids are going to have to be here anyway, if they're in them. <laughs> yeah. Is there a week when you don't have something? I mean, really. you know, I, I, that's I, the other hard part. Just, just one thing. I'm looking at February and March, especially. Like, I look at this in a six-week run. There's four Fridays. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know that that is tough. I mean, and I understand the parents' plight. I mean, I, I'm in, for me, it's no big deal because my wife can work from home. But four Fridays, it, it, I guess it was brought to me that it would be easier to have more of a stretch off to find care yeah. than every Friday. Once again, it was just brought to my attention yeah. by a couple different families. And I, I know this is adopted now, but you know, just just wanted to maybe bring it up to whoever's on the council. Well, it's not in cement yet, because you haven't given it the final blessing, so. In Minnesota, there's a week long spring break. Yeah, and I, I mean. I don't know if that's kind of the model you're referring yeah, to. Yeah, something of that, something of that. Just yeah, for a year longer. They also go away longer. They also go away longer. They go yeah. till yep. June. No, I don't. I don't. It's a double-edged sword either way. I, like, I, I get that. <laughs> I think what you see on there right now, if you count up all those days, you'll see at the bottom where it says 180. Mm -hmm. Take those seven days out for those state contests, and then you're on 173. That's the notion. Having those teachers to fulfill a 177-day contract, you would have to choose for those, give them the option to choose for those to work, to fulfill that. Mm -hmm. You know, there. <laughs> this is, I don't know, people may find this, right the appropriate term to use this is food for thought some people won't like this but there's always the potential opportunity through negotiation processes to eliminate the totality of days that you include on your contract don't include days it's a school year who decides what the school year is school board start date end date don't don't align it to 177 days. Now your staff, I don't know if they'll like that or not, depends on what you expect them to do within the course of a calendar school year. But those that have done that, and there are a few that have done that, I don't think that they're going, they're being obtuse and narrow-minded and taking people, you know, into late May and early June, you know, by having that opportunity to say just the school year instead of stipulating the days and part of that is is you guys as a school board you have an expectation teachers are signing a 177 day contract you expect them to work 177 days but if you say school year right what does that mean and that may be a little more lending it to yourself Jed to something that you were proposing you know, and I think the biggest potential thing here, which we gave up two days, because all actuality, and I sat down with Mr. Norton on this, is that while well, it says 171 student contact days, he told me that they have counted, Craig, maybe you can be A or an A on this, but it should actually be 173, because they counted those teacher work days for parent-teacher conferences as school days for those kids, too. So we went from 175 to essentially 173, so we lost two to contact these with kids out of this scenario based on what it is this year. So and you're talking when they have parent teacher conferences that night is counted as one of the student That's contact days. Mm -hmm. That is correct. For so you so basically conference day counts not, as two not days. Teachers, students. It counted as a student day. Because of the in the one seventy seven. Yes. Okay. In the one seventy one in the one seven. Oh excuse me. Yeah. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I didn't include that on there, so it's actually 173 if you counted it that way. How many do you have to have? It's it's by hours. Okay. Yeah. So we're well over that. Yeah. yeah. Can I mention some one thing, Mr. McKinnon? One thing that was tied, I know when he came, he said, maybe he will would have said this, but he has a hard time getting to the staff for in-service times. Mm -hmm. And some of these days are, you know, there's early outs. There's a lot more early outs on this calendar. And that way they can go through test scores. They can go through some of that stuff that they maybe hadn't been getting the chance to in the past because we've only had two staff in services all year long. Mm -hmm. Which does create a problem for daycare with those situations. Mm -hmm. So you kind of got to weigh, is that important or not where this calendar 
does allow some of that. Well, and you'll you'll find it across the state <coughs> of South Dakota. The ifs ands. I mean, there there's everything under the sun that's people's approaches to that. I mean, I can tell you, Sioux Valley School District every Wednesday at one o'clock, every Wednesday at one o'clock, for the sole purpose of doing teacher professional development. Um, a lot of schools like us. A lot of schools that, that what we're suggesting here, and, and you know the seven. I'm not talking. I'm not talking about the state competition events. I'm talking about the other eight days there. You see where there's early outs, and I think Miss or Lindsay, you, you you made a statement last time. If you let them know that that is coming, you 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 make you you, you prep for it. I mean, it is what it is, and people say, well, that's those kids should be in school. My comment back to that is, is how well you want your teachers no, to be. You've got to be delivering quality education, too. And it's not that we're not, but if you stay stagnant, if you don't challenge those people, you don't keep pushing those people, you know, I mean, it's like anything else. You fall into a little bit of a rut and bad habits, you know. And I um, agree. Um, that is a lot of Fridays to be off and, and it is. in those two months. But I think That's why that transition that way is because so we don't have that. Friday before some team qualifies for state, mm -hmm. and then they have to find daycare for yeah. that next Friday. Yeah. You know, at least yeah. this way. No, it's, I, I think that's why. I and certainly, I think you could take a couple of those days off of there. I, it means nothing to me other than now you're creating inequities amongst yes. the sporting yeah. events. That hey, you let them go, you didn't let us go. Mm -hmm. You know, you're 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 telling them that this one's more important <laughs> than the other. And that's not what you believe, but. By making a decision like that, that's it's the message that you send to those particular uh, uh, programs and saying, "Hey, you know," and you guys know already that the big three are the ones that everybody's going to rail on because the little guys that oh, well, you don't care about us. I mean, I'm not saying that's true, but it's a it's a tendency to happen like that. But I get the February and March jet. I when I'm putting this together, I'm looking like that, and I'm like, Jesus. But if you look at yeah, I mean, if you look at February, you run a modified calendar on a four-day school week. You just don't even know you do it. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> I agree. That's what do we have off this? In March, two Fridays. Two Fridays. So if you look at February, February March third is off, tenth is off, twenty-fourth is off, tenth is off, and seventeenth is off. Mm -hmm. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you got one, two, three, four, five. So mm -hmm. five of the nine are four day mm -hmm. weeks. Yeah. Now you okay. put the caveat in there. If one of those opportunities, like March, if we want a little bit longer uh, break on that, you can. We can put verbiage in there. Be prepared, people. As long as they're known ahead of time, like we just talked about. If one of those teams make it, you know we're going to do a, a three day week. I mean, and you'll know some of that stuff ahead of time because they qualify for those events mm -hmm. prior to those events happening or those days happening. I mean, you could do that, you know, as long as people are prepared to some degree for it or, you know. So this comes like spring break, like spring, spring break or just a five day break at some point? Well, it's a spring break of so some I, sort in March. It's you know? not the first time I've heard, you know, the spring aspect of things. So, I mean, people like to go Right. At that point in time of the year, it starts warming up. Whether you're going to get a last minute ski run yeah. out in the hills or you're actually going to take a vacation somewhere. I mean, mm -hmm. traveling outside of the state of South Dakota, flying somewhere, things of that nature. Right. So. Okay. Do we need a motion or what do you guys think? Do we want to revisit this or we have to make a decision tonight? Or I could take it back to the committee. I mean, it's not not the end of the world if there's something that it's just how much latitude you you know are you going to give them i mean they if i take it back to them they're saying no we like it i mean then what mm -hmm. i mean whose decision is it to adopt the calendar ultimately it's the board adopts the calendar i like the idea of, i mean like it's been mentioned here planning right mm -hmm. i mean regardless I, I like the idea of planning i just in years to come, I mean, I, I mean, I like to get away with my family and whatnot. Mm -hmm, absolutely. I mean, I, I'd like to see some sort of spring break worked in here, but like, like you mentioned, Mr. Mr. M, you know, <laughs> what do you move? Well, that's what gets tough. It really, really truly does. Yep. I mean, I, 
I just put in notes. I, I, I just remember, you know, taking adding days or removing days. That's that's a, a, a bone of contention only because mm -hmm. you have staff assigned to a 177 day yeah. contract. So, however we shuffle the, those opportunities, I mean, I think there's a way to do it. I mean, wouldn't it have to be intentional? And maybe it just is in verbiage, Jed, that it comes out that you know we're going to take a look at this in March of 2023, end of February. We'll see where teams are at. I mean, I can tell you. And anything's possible. That's what. That's the nature. And that's the beauty of March Madness, right? We could be 0 and 20. Mr. Mr. Bruning is going to be 0 and 20, and he's going to have an opportunity. Lord, what about 20 and 0? Why yeah, do you got to go yeah, 0 and 20? Just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying that if things look doom and gloom, he has an opportunity to go to the state tournament. Well, like this year, uh, the eighth seed in Class B girls. Just yeah, one state tournament. So awesome. right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But if we could put something in verbiage there that identifies those two weekends and utilizing one of them, how it, depending on how it works out, then we'll go with it. I but mean, in reality, you wouldn't know that until a week ahead of time. Unfortunately, right? essentially, it's yeah, short. Essentially, I mean, you're not going to have March seven. Yeah, you be able to do it some anyway. Trip. That's going to be mass confusion. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe we could just make a note for the next. You're just kind of asking for the next time they do the calendar. So yeah. Take that I, into I, account. I mean, in the people not necessarily the changing this no, one but next no. in the future it just as as maybe a two three year plan okay. even to try to work mm -hmm. some sort of spring break okay. in there so do you think that should be over easter or no i don't know it traditionally well, in it anywhere was, i've ever been well, easter more so much it's yeah. been march yeah, march it, mid-march is yeah. usually a spring break yeah you know we used yeah. to have one when i was in high school yeah. i mean i like the idea of it i mean just i got wild kids I like them around a little bit. Okay. All right. We need a motion to approve this year's, yes. this next year's, right? Yep. All so right. Moved. Second. Moved by Schoenfelder and second by Leishner to approve the 22 23 school calendar as presented. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Both same sign. All right. We'll move to C. Offer contracts to certified, classified, and administrative staff <coughs> for. 22-23 school year. It's just a, just a, somebody make a motion. That's all you need is that, and that's where in Burbage we'll let those people know that hey, the school board is going to offer you a contract. And then we aren't listing any names or anything in this no, motion. It's just no. what and then you when just we said. when we settle, and part of that is so we don't have to issue it in, in using the word offer instead of issue, because it's a waste of paper. Let us get done with negotiations, issued it to them, and then we'll get it out to them. But this is making note of the fact that you are letting them, you're putting them on notice that they have contract coming. So, so they'll get an individual notice is what you're saying? I will let them, I'll put it out, everybody, that you all are being offered a contract. Okay, I see. Okay. Okay, we need a motion to approve. So moved. Second Moved by Weber and second by Neville to offer contracts to the administrative certified and classified staff for the FY 22-23 school year. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Both same sign. Motion carried. Okay, so we'll move to A. Yep, sorry, Gerald. Consider RFP for architect engineering mm -hmm. services. So uh, Friday was your deadline for the request for proposals for architectural engineering services that we put out. So we had four people submit a proposal. So you have Architectural Inc. Architecture Inc. Or excuse me, Architecture Incorporated. We have Pitts Construction. We have JLG, and you have Coke Hazard. All submitted a proposal. So the process here is that we'll pass these out, and then what we. I think what you have to do as a school board is spend some time. We're going to look through these, and within the RFP, there was a specific set of criteria, which I looked through all of these for you, and they all have what you asked for in here, in each of their proposals. Then it's about, okay, deciding the best path forward. Do we bring all four of these people in, or are there two of them that stand out to you that you want to bring in for an interview? to make a even refine your decision down because you can only pick one obviously and then we have a conversation with that particular group and saying okay what kind of contract are we going to enter into 
what are your fee for services, things of that nature, in order to move forward as far as development. And you'll see timelines in here. Um, I think the best way to do this is just we'll pick one, we'll pass it around, and we can look at the pages one by one real quick. And I'm not going to go great in depth on this. Um, G. I. Mine's in my. I just remember here. Yeah. And I apologize because some of these are a little bit more, um, they're aesthetically more appealing than others. Art Inc. actually sent me seven copies of, of theirs. And some of these others, one sent me one copy, one sent me three copies, one sent me, I think, two copies. So we replicated some of these. So some of them look a little bit more appealing than others. Okay. Was there a platform that you could put this out there on, or did you have to individually contact? So I, I did reach out to a couple people on that, and they suggested that you reach out to those firms. And I went to every firm, and I went to six different firms, and sent them an email, because they said contact us, and sent them an email, and he actually just uploaded that RFP, said, hey, we're interested. If you're interested, get a hold of us. And these are um, actually five responded but only four chose to put uh, an RFP or submit an RFP back to us. So that was, there was really no exchange, Matt, to you know, throw that okay. out there on. It was more of a, okay, throw it, you know, contact them personally. Okay. So, so if you look at Architectural Incorporated, you know, um, essentially the, the scope and sequence of what they were looking at is by page. So if you turn to, well, not the first page, but turn it back and pass these letters. So you have an executive summary. They had to tell us about their firm. Okay, that's on the first page. Second page there, educational design expertise. You'll see a small little sum summation there, plus the number of schools that they've done at the bottom of that page. Okay, so stay with me here. I know we're going to fly through this, and we can kind of go back after I've explained it to you. Th then they have this notion of how they get back. That's not part of the requirement, but that's something that they included in theirs as to what do they do in their firm to, you know, um, give back to their community. There again, you see section two is relevant project experience. Again, by name, you can see all the pictures associated with some of their designs and the actual work. And you can see those pages that are afterwards. You see those linemen, of course, the Stickney. And you can see Lennox, I mean, you can look at Kadoka. I mean, so just, just giving you pictures, you know, of those firms that, or excuse me, of those facilities that they built. So if you keep turning back, um, there's, there's, it kind of gives you this uh, description of what those, so team three, or excuse me, number three, it says project team that was in your RFP. So essentially who's in charge? What is the flow chart? And you can see the people that they work with in architecture and engineering. Okay, you might see it uh, in the first one there, in that page, under engineering, you might recognize that name. And that's how those firms work. So Mr. DeWitt, who has helped you with your um, HVAC and lighting project, because he's a mechanical engineer, they reach out to those firms in order to support them in, in the development of the process or the facility. So um, then it gives you a list of all the people that are working within their firm. Because that's, that's part of your um, expectation in your RFP. Then the rest of that, you'll see they give those bios of each one of those people in their firm. So you can take a look at all the people and, and their uh, expertise. Then you're going back to section four, the firm differentiation in their project approach. Um, that was something that was in your RFP. I don't know if it's the exact wording, but it kind of just, they give a summation as to how they approach their projects. Okay. And they don't have them labeled by page numbers, but I told you section four is what, you were, is what you'd be looking at. Then if you go almost all the way back, you have section five, that's references. Those are all superintendents, typically, or people in leadership who they, they built projects before. <coughs> and then if you look at section six, project schedule, let's just look at this one from Architect Inc. That's by month that you see there. Okay, so um, ending of 2022 of what that happens to be. 
Um, and then the, how that flows into 2023. So December, November, October, September, August, June, July. So May, starting in May already of 2022. Program information gathering, June, July, August, their design, um, schematic design, and then you got September, October, your design development, construction documents, November, December, they put it out for bids in January with construction starting in early as, you know, um, March of 2023. Just so everybody knows, that's a little fast for me. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> exactly. But uh, you will see when you look at the other ones, Matt, that those timelines, you're going to see pretty, pretty close. I like it. There wasn't a lot of deviation there. There's a little bit, but there wasn't a lot. So that's Architect Incorporated. Do you need a six-year step guideline well, or what? Well, slower, but maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you drew attention to that. I appreciate that. Thank you. So here is Pitts Construction. And I have not talked, I've talked to Mr. Weber, and he's vice president of that firm. Um, so, sorry. Um, I should have took a... Um, there is codified law out there that is in place that a firm that's in this type of work that like a uh, pits construction they can do build and design they can do both but codified law says they can't do both so codified law says if they become your uh, um, design team if they're the ones that are going to bring this to fruition then they can't do the construction management part of it but if they, let's say, Architect Inc. is the, the design part of it, they can go with Pitts Construction in order to be the construction manager. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that's embedded in codified law, came out probably three, four, it's either right before or right, right after the track project. Yeah. Right during the start of that track project, remember when it started? I think it was like. Yeah. And, and before we I don't know, I don't remember the rationale behind that, but somebody had some heartburn, obviously, um, in the so legislature about doing that. that. So, mm -hmm. okay. So it's the same approach. You'll see their, their history, you know, Pitts' construction, who they are, you know, um, and then it'll, obviously, you'll get into some of their processes. Their, if you look on their side, they got pre-design, schematic design. They are a little bit different in their approach, obviously, because they can do both. An Arc Inc. obviously is not a construction firm mm -hmm. where pits, they'll build it for you too if they can. They're either going to design it for you or they're going to build it for you. You know, so they have a little bit different notion on some of these uh, uh, concepts like the construction documents and then the construction administration and then, you know, their how do they end their project? On the tentative project schedule there, Matt, just so you can see, it says pre-engineered metal building lead time is currently six to eight months, so it probably won't be in the spring of 2023. So they pushed it back for you. <laughs> Where'd you see that? It know? says it right here. On the very front? No, on this tentative project schedule. <laughs> Which, when they had that timeline, I was kind of surprised because the way Damon spoke, he made it sound like some things are so hard to get that it's right. pushing you way out. So that's right. interesting. Well, and I will put this caveat out there to you. This is what they traditionally do in their industry. These are the timelines that they work on in any one given a, a, a project. They will be the first ones to admit because I had, so Architect E. They came and visited me. Pitts Construction came and visited me. JLG came and visited me. And Cocazard. So all four of these firms donned the door. We did the walk around. We looked at things. We had conversation about what it is that you're looking at. But they all, the first ones to admit is the timeline. Okay. Yeah, no example. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just because of what Joe referenced and what they referenced on lead times. You know, it's really a moving target 
right now. So it's so hard to say. And where that's going to go in the future, you know, one only knows. So I thought Pitts is, uh, if you look at this page, yeah. it's page 27. If you want to see schematically, you know, those two places that we had talked about that we showed on Google Earth. Mm -hmm. And I, I get it, it's just a schematic, right? But, I mean, potentially what it could look like, I guess, when you add that component to it, you know. And all four firms, I, I took them and showed them as to potential sites. And I said, if you got better ideas, let us know. But I directed them all to Google Earth. I pulled up Google Earth and showed them our, I don't know if they're in the habit of doing that in their firms, I have no idea. You know, so they looked at it. Um, they at least have an opportunity to go look at it from Google Earth's perspective. So is this game in sun? Yes. Is it? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Yep. Oh. Now, do I know all these people in all these firms? No, I don't. Okay. But obviously they know what they're doing here because if you look at even the pictures and stuff that are, I mean, you're pulling this. Mm -hmm. I'm jealous. He, he works for Ace too. Who does? David's son yeah. works for Ace too. Oh, I was going to say, he looked like, they kind of look like him. In the same way. Okay. So you have Pitts, JLG. They are just starting to get a foothold in the state of South Dakota, and they're more of a Midwest company. But they've done several projects. To, they've done several projects. Several projects in the state already. So they're they're I don't know. They're probably been around five plus I think, and it might even say that in their history. They've been around longer than that, but their footprint in South Dakota has only been of uh, of recent. He works no. for them or what? Yeah, yeah. Oh. as a consultant. <laughs> oh. So I will tell you this, just so you are aware. This company, Architect Game, they these companies are in the practice now of hiring retired superintendents, putting them on the payroll, and for the purpose of K-12 consultants. Because those superintendents have been through, like in this particular case with JLG, Mr. Holbeck, he's built just about, with the exception of two buildings in the Harrisburg School District, Mr. Holbeck is, and the chair superintendent he's the one has who built spoke at the all of those buildings. We to so they call so them good. consultants yes. because yes. he knows what a school district potentially would need, what they look for, what are the nuances that are aligned with K-12, you know, because it's different than building a hospital. It's different than building, you know, some other firm type of situation. So they're hiring. This happens to be their K-12 consultant. This is Brian Fields. Brian just re re uh, retired from the Beersford School District um, after a 30-plus year career. Um, and this is obviously um, uh, Mr. Holbeck, who is recently retired from the Harrisburg School District. And I don't believe Coke Hazard, they probably have a K-12 consultant, but I don't know who that is. And then Pitts, I don't think Mr. Weber um, has that component. They talk to people, but they don't have somebody on the staff that does that. So if we're looking at JLG, you'll see the same kind of information as to all their projects, And those projects you can see across the board, I mean, those are Midwest, right? <laughs> but we all have a tendency to go look at that timeline. If you look on page, get past all the, Lindsay, what page is that? 28, very last one. The very last page, yeah, sorry. If you want to look at their suggested timeline, it's pretty, pretty close. I mean, they're all pretty close kind of get that same concept as to where they're going. Craig, you said we were going to make our building payment last one next year. 
No, not next year. I think it's two and a half years yet. Two. I can look that. I'll look that up. Before, John. Which payment is that, Mr. Green? He's talking about the uh, that bond payment, correct? Oh, currently okay. we have five hundred twenty-eight thousand of the nine twenty-four in there. June, we'll put another sixty-six. I think it's a couple years yet. Two and a half. Or, I'll double check though because it's in the budget book here. <coughs> yes. Oh, they're doing it right now. They are in the midst of it. Oh. Yes. Yep. And that is that facility. Holbeck told me is essentially their their emphasis is wrestling room, weight room. So yeah, there's some similarities. I mean, we want to go broader than that, but. Right. I called them and got their square footage and based on the bids and all that stuff from them on that project. Mm -hmm. They wanted like a coaches, or not a coaches, but a referees, like little locker room area and some different things like that as far as an early childhood um, area exit for their buses and things like some heated sidewalks and some other things that they had to get rid of. <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> wow. So. So JLG, I obviously met with Mr. Holbeck, but their lead architect, Catherine Deganga, I've actually talked to her. Um, obviously, they use Damon as well. But uh, you know, I actually know Jeff McCormick up at SPN. So um, he's, he's helped me on a couple different projects. So that's kind of their take on things. And I know we're going through this fast, you guys. And this is Colt Hazard. Sorry. You're right. No, you're fine. Push. And Colt sure. Hazard is a longtime firm um, in Sioux Falls. And they're, they're, they're across the state. All these firms, their history's in there. They have satellite offices in the major cities, for sure, in our metro areas. So um, I've worked with Coke Hazard before in a building project up there. We put an addition on or a kitchen addition on. And they, they're a they're, they're quality group as well. I mean, these are all quality uh, um, firms to work with. So. But they have, you know, you'll see all their relevant project experience. It tells you who they are, like you put in your proposal. Um, and then it'll give you associations with their team. You know, who do they work with? You know, that's towards the end. Again, you'll see Damon DeWitt on there. Um, the two gentlemen that showed up on page 12 were the principal in charge, so Mr. Keith Thompson and Chris um, Brockvelt, they both showed up, and I, I spent some time with them and we went around and looked, so um, they came up personally. Then the very last page is their project timeline. They have the references listed there for sure. So I don't know if I do complicated things even more by doing it this way. Me being new, you know, I wasn't didn't feel it was right or appropriate to me to say to steer you guys. Hey, you're gonna you know let's work with these guys. Hey, we have choices here to make. Uh, if you don't want to interview them all. If there's something there that stands out, um, that you want to bring two of them in, three of them in, or if there's something there, and I know we didn't get a lot of time to go looking through this information, and don't you feel obligated, I think, by any stretch, as to the timelines that you see in there, that if we want to take these things home, you want to vet them again, you want to bring it back in April that's easy enough to do I will tell you that if it's something that we're really serious about firms like this you may end up losing one of them only because the amount of work that is 
happening in the K-12 sector mm -hmm. right now that they might say, hey, we can't do that. You know, we kind of missed the boat or the timeline that we're in order to bring them on board. So um, what I had envisioned there, whoever or however many, honestly, um, two scenarios, if it's something you don't want to wait till the April board meeting on, or in conjunction with an April board meeting on, that you want to bring these firms in. Your meetings are long enough the way it is, but if we want to make one night of it and burn the clock, so to speak, to bring some of these in in conjunction with the regular school board meeting, you could do it that way. Or you have a special board meeting to just, the only thing on the agenda is for architect engineering consideration. So, so I guess I was under the assumption that there would be a little bit more just rough planning, like kind of it's um, submitted here. I realize this is just rough, right. rough, rough, but it is rough. Um, I, that's where I was at in this process, I guess, just trying to yeah. see what was even possible to think about. So right. um, that's the closest thing that you got right there. Right, right. right. And they, they won't do that yet because you haven't committed mm -hmm. to them. And, mm -hmm. and then talk about the exchange yep. of mm -hmm. ideas for resources. So, and if I misled you, I apologize. No, that I that don't know. Mr. McGann, do you think Mr. four is too many to, to have come in and present to us? I mean, me personally, I think, whoa. I mean, I, I feel as a board we should Narrow. consider narrowing this down to at least three. That's mm -hmm. just my thought, unless you, how long of a presentation do you think they're going to want to? These, I think any one of these guys can come in here in a half an hour and give you their spiel why they should, why you should pick them. Well, I suppose in that case, I mean, I, if I, I, I thought it'd be close to an hour. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I maybe not. It depends I, on if we want to. If you start going into the weeds, like Matt yeah. saying, okay, what do you envision yes. here? You know, if this is more about just trying to get a feel for them on a personal level. Who you like and what feedback and, and what kind of vibe you're getting from them about working with them and i think part of that conversation one of the guiding questions is is what's your fees mm -hmm. exactly. how much how much is it going to cost to bring this to not only the i let's talk about just the idea of fruition because each one of them told me a little bit different as to how they could approach that in the very last paragraph of your rfp the negotiation for fees it's a statement that's in there. And I had this firm ask me for clarification of what are you, what are you, what are you looking for on that? What do you mean by that as far as the negotiation for fees? Some, she said there's two trains of thought on that. Is sometimes you'll get into that up front, okay, before you get into that, or we'll get into it on the back side of it. You know, so she said it's it's both ways, mm -hmm. and I don't honestly and honest give you a hundred percent confident that I know what that means because I'm not sure that I do. So, but I'm I'm with you. I mean, if I feel confident that any one of these could come in here and say for a half hour stand in front of you and say pick me and here's why, and here's what we'll do for you. And is it a is it a dog and pony show? Um, I don't know. I suspect, but I think there's some there's there's some you know, true intent and, and meaning behind it. But that's what they have to, that's what they do, right? So three of these companies, all they do is the architectural piece. These three, right? Exactly. And this one that's does architectural else. and building. Yeah. Right. He'll do the design and build. He, j he, he can't do he, both. He, he if can't. we pick him for design, he can't do construction. He, yeah, he's not gonna manage it for you. He can't. Construction, they can't yeah. be the construction manager. Yeah. Too. So he's gonna have to work with a different firm. Yeah. Like a Hogadorn or I mean yeah. uh, some other construction firm that <laughs> journey or whoever it is. Uh, yeah, right, exactly. Um, and the, the thing about this, this one, you know, and this is where I didn't want to get too involved in it, is that's local. Right. So, but is it possible that if we picked one of these that just do the engineering portion, they could do the construction portion? Yeah, that's what I, me personally, like if we're going to build this and do it right, I'd rather have someone that 
does the architectural piece every day. From a nickel pipe sense. And then I would I would like to use someone local yeah, for building, yeah, right. which to well, me makes total sense then that they would fit that or be chosen for that. This is their um, own. No. I don't know. Yeah. I and every one of these firms, Joe, they all told me <laughs> I'm just they have worked with this yeah. firm on the building aspect of it at some point in time. Yeah. And, and even recently they've worked they've all worked with because that's what judges say, you know. So they're the architect, and Pitts would bid the construction yeah. part then, mm -hmm. and they're going to have to work with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would rather, I mean, for me, they did our construction of our track, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And they did a great job, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so to me, it's mm -hmm. like I'd rather them do the construction portion. That's what they do every day. These guys, I mean, they put up a really like Mitchell Tex camp plus, campus mm -hmm. plus the fine arts center. I mean, I really, I, I have a lot of confidence in Pitts's ability to erect structures and do a fine job along the way. I just, it, it almost pains me to, you know, take them out of the running. For construction portion? Contractor. For, for they were the construction design. manager. They weren't necessarily the construction people because doing construction was the actual. Oh, gotcha. They, they, they just managed it. They yeah. subbed. Yeah. Right? Yeah, Is that how it worked? Some of the stuff might be subbed out, but these guys would probably still be the GC work, general contractor. Yeah. yeah. So you're saying not use them for the engineering I'm course for the architectural. That, but I, is that that's probably, what I was yeah, saying. Like no, it makes total sense to me does. that they would help with the the general contracting maybe portion that isn't of what it. They want to do. Maybe not. Maybe, yeah. Maybe they got a lot of projects. Yeah. yeah. And and so they want to do. They don't want to be the general contractor. They need right. some design projects. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. So well, I never got into that conversation with yeah. Mr. Poe. I have no idea. What? So so do you have? Um, in talking to other superintendents and doing projects, uh, bigger projects, have, um, have have they given you some type of a ballpark idea of cost? If you can. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and you just talking to these people, and then I know Dr. DeBoer over at Parker, because sure. they're building one of these for, I don't remember, I think it was Coke Hazard. You know, they're building something for them right now. Right. Um, and uh, who else was the other one? <coughs> Freeman? This is Kate. I haven't talked Freeman? to Mr. Teach. Mm -hmm. um, there was one other one. Because because of what's happening right now, I mean, it, it's dependent on the type of facility, but even with steel erection right now, you're talking you'd be blessed to get it under for 300 bucks a square foot. So if we're talking about a 100 by 100 facility, that's 10,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. So automatically right there, there's your 3 million. So $1,000 a year on a capital outlay. That comes off the top because you have to make your payment. That's where you say your QZEP bonds are just, what, you know, two and a half years, you said they're gonna be? In um, December of 2024 is the last payment. Yeah, so it's close, right? So and that's then, 132 right now. Technically, you're that you'd be debt free at that point, right, Craig? Because mm -hmm. your stadium is you did all that. Yeah, that was this, right? What was that day? December 9th of 2024. We will make our last payment. So two, two, two years. and a half years. Yep. So, so yeah, here's with the payments. we Maybe. can come back next month and you'll have more firm numbers. Then we, we can, can look over these and decide mm -hmm. which ones we like and pick or them out next. Two months. I mean, Matt's can't yeah. right? if, if, if our number's three million, that's going to cost, then let's, yeah. let's know how we're going to be paying for it, mm -hmm. whether it's on a 20 or 30 year type yeah, of amortization. Mm -hmm. and, and how it can be funded. And mm -hmm. if, if we think that that three million is going to get us where we want right. it to be. And we can, yeah, we can reach out to a couple of firms. I mean, D. A. Davidson. Uh, no. to, uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, we'll just Beethman, be Northland Security. Yeah, I mean, there's firms out there that we can reach out to. What's the market right now in respect to the certificate? You know, selling them. You know, what's the interest rate going on them? Things of that nature. So we have some firmer numbers too. You know, Honestly, again, Mark, Parker told me three percent on theirs. What was it? Three percent. Three percent. But they had done that a year or so, yeah. or you know what I mean, because right. they're in, they're already in the construction phase. Right. So that was a year prior, so maybe a little higher now. Interest but rates are still attractive right now, guys. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, that's, I don't I'm need with to that do plan. anything. Just 
with these right now. We don't mm -hmm. need to make a motion on these right yeah. now or anything like that. No. Nope. So we'll just review them and decide if we want to. We'll come back next time if we have reservations or thoughts on who we like or if we're going to do all four. Or right. Just think about yeah. it. Okay. And we'll, we'll, I'll tell all those guys <coughs> and say, hey, here's where we're at with this deal. And they can say, well, count us out then. Okay, that's fine. Okay. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they're, they're used to this. I mean, that's how they live. Mm -hmm. They're used to school board saying, well, I thought you were ready. Well, I guess we're not ready. I mean, I'm not saying we're ready to build, but I mean, th 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 that's no skin off of there. Mm -hmm. So, okay. quite honestly, these are canned. They're just mm -hmm. dropping the pictures. Yeah, that's what we're in, for. in my opinion. So. Okay, sounds good. Okay. All right, we're at the end of our agenda except for executive session, so. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. And I've asked Mr. Kinnenberg to stay. If we guys want to have a conversation with him, he was on the schedule to the, the yearly check-in, how's it going conversation. And he, I told him, I just told him. So I, he kind of knew it though. So apologize to him, but he'll do his spiel with you guys. Uh, Greg and Adam and I will leave. And then you guys can have that conversation and we'll be right back in here. And so we need to recess right now. I may go to the bathroom and we'll call it into go into the back and recess at 8.36. Okay.